Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Guys in the Flag Jackets. If you enjoy the podcast, please feel free to check out our brand new Patreon. Patreon is a platform that lets you support our podcast financially while having a chance to get some exclusive merchandise. Please feel free to visit patreon.com slash guys in the flag jackets or click the link in the episode description to check it out. Well, good evening. <laughs> One of my sons asked me the other night if boys can be elected mayor in Boston. They have been, and they will again someday, but not tonight. Please stand for the national anthem of Luxembourg. Wer du als es durst, wiesen zeigt, durch vier sind sauer brüscht. Wer dir flanscht, Musel durch das Blät, den Himmel wein uns mischt. Der da sonst lang, für das mag ich, ein Mieden alles wohn. Uns Himmels Land, das mir so tief am Nonsen hier. Als kann er schon der freie Gicht ja gehen. Los, wir blinken frei zum Ding, wir so lang gesehen. Los, wir blinken frei zum Ding, wir so lang gesehen. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Guys in the Flight Track. Well, happy holidays, everybody. It's been a couple of weeks. <clears throat> What's happened? Since when? We last, since, since, since we, since since we last talked. It's been a while. Oh, boy. Um, well, uh, I think a gubernatorial candidate dropped out. Which we kind of predicted. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> we gave it out. Yeah. We didn't say who, but we knew. And then uh, more people got into the lieutenant governor's race, which, again, we predicted. Technically, nobody has. Uh, Eric Lesser? He hasn't officially announced that he's running yet. Oh, he just changed his fundraising committee from state senator to lieutenant governor. A couple people did that who aren't running. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) They're running for something else now. Yeah. A little little more locally, our DA has announced he's not running for re-election. Long-term DA. Not really, what, 12 years? 2002. That's 20 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is it a four-year term? DA is weird and massive. Well, <laughs> DA is the, the normal one, I guess. It's every four years. Right. Okay. Um, as opposed to, like, everything else, which is, like... Six or, six two. or two. Yeah, yeah. random. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there'll be a DA's race here. That's going to be... You know what? That is the kind of thing we should be following. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. That's the, like, you know, the governor's race, the lieutenant governor's race, all that stuff. We'll, we'll, we talk about... Obviously, we talked at length about the, on the last podcast. We're here for, like, the DA's race. Like, that. Yeah. that is the, the point of us being here, is to talk about the races that nobody... That's what all politics is, was originally created for. Right? Like, we created that... Bringing... Bringing... Uh, what, what is it? Bringing uh, the people to, like... The, the races that don't saying, get airtime. I was thinking more like bringing the obscure to the front. Before yeah, to the <laughs> forefront, right? It's not even obscure. It's like school committee. That's not that's not obscure. Yeah, but it's really important. It's just nobody pays attention, nobody to, pays it. attention to it. Yeah. And so it's trying to... But nobody pays attention to it. And we ask the question, is nobody paying attention to it? Because there's no outlet for them to pay. Like, who? why are you going to pay attention to a race when... Nobody's covering it. Nobody's covering it. And, and we know, like... If no one, if it's not in the news, it's not in the media, it's not on social media, it's not, uh, I mean, social media helped us get it out there, but if it's not out there, why are people going to pay attention to it? And we found that that kind of is the case. 
I would say arguably the DAs. That's Probably going to be the school committee race the, the of most, this cycle. The most influential office in Essex County, at the very least. Well, yeah. Well, in Essex County, yeah. Sure. I guess one would, could argue that the governor's council. Yes, but that's I mean, every two years. Gary. Appointing judges. Yeah. So that's sort of... Both kind of important. They're both kind of important. I don't yeah, know. Especially with, I mean, the DA's races na nationwide. That are like Yeah, nationally, DA's, I think, are handled much more like higher up than we do here in Massachusetts. Well, I think, or maybe in Essex. No, I don't know. I mean, for, we've had, it's because we've had an incumbent who hasn't had a challenge. I mean, and you know what? I, I want to focus on the DA's race. I think okay. we get these candidates and we get them here, like not here, but we <laughs> in interview your basement. them. But that was the thing was that like, we actually went and we met with these people in their homes or in their communities or, um, at a coffee shop yeah. or, uh, do that with everything. Actually, we're probably gonna have to do it in the primary because I'm not sure if many Republicans would sit down with us. But hey, you know what? We can ask. Nobody them. else is covering the Republican, so no. If we give them a shot, <laughs> they should probably yeah. take it, right? You'd think. I don't know. I don't know. And that was pretty successful. I think we got you know on election night we had thousands of people watching. Yeah. For the results of like school committee race. Granted, they were there for the mayoral. They were race, there but, for the mayoral race. But still, they were at least aware. But because, they hung around. You know, the they they knew to, they knew where to find us and how to find us and. Maybe that because we, I feel like if we tried hard on election night, ah, I could do like oh, an yeah. election night live with like DA results and like that. Get who's big, who else is going to be doing that? Big community. We're going to work on that. But the way you can help us out is by subscribing to our Patreon. One of the levels is if you actually hit this level, we'll mention your name and thank you. Not only in the description, but um, we'll, we'll give you a shout out during the show. Mm. Um, oh, okay. So. Catherine B. Or, oh, sorry, Catherine oh. I apologize. <laughs> keeping that in there um yeah and we won't you know thank you to Catherine for yeah thank you Catherine. for helping us out appreciate it um and our loyal listener so i think we we should focus on the what other is there anything else not this year i mean lieutenant governor i, I think still it's... think actually you know the more that i think about it too we could we should definitely have to do it people because oh, we have local state. races oh, that yeah. we got to cover Absolutely. we have state rep races so it's glad I'm glad that in January we're thinking about this because usually it's 4:30 <laughs> on election day. Like well, it's literally was... election day at like 4:30. People are sending us messages saying, "Hey, are you doing results tonight?" And I'm I like, think it was... "Yeah, sure." And I've got to get like 10 people out there. Was it like 2017? I think it was. I think it was 2017. Well, we did the first one. No, that was the mayor. All that was that was so the first was one 19. we did. So yeah. 2019. Yes, <laughs> the so week before we had started it in 2017. Yep. All politics is, which yep. is. Could be where you find us on Facebook. The predecessor to this. It's sort of, we're a branch of that. Um, we created that in 2017 because Jim and I had decided we're going to take like almost a year off yeah. from campaigning. It, it got really draining the years leading up to 20, or 2017. So 2019 came around and we were ready to go again and we started helping people. We were campaigning people. We actually had campaigns on election pa paying day. Us. Paying us. And we were, well... One, and one anyways. we were in like, we were in, I was in like the boiler room, like two hours before polls closed, yep. two years later. Instead and somebody, of focusing on an election, people are asking us, are you going to get it? Our candidates ended up winning anyways, but they did that year and that's why we were comfortable And their polls. So their polls closed an hour before Lawrence's closed. Yeah. Like they closed at seven. Yeah. So at seven, we got the results for them, said, hey, you won. Congrats. I got to go. <laughs> and like ran to City Hall to broadcast live in 2019, two yep. years after, only because people were asking us to do it. So we really found a like sort of a gap where people wanted something like this. We used to have something like this, but as radio went, TV wasn't going to sort of take the place yeah, of it. Implement, yeah. yeah, so even though it could have, it like, could have. Easily. And I think for a long time, other types of radio, you know, podcasts. There were podcasts that were done there and things like that. But that was about a decade ago. It really has been a, a gap, and there's so many people that actually genuinely some want to know. Some local towns do it. Like Chelmsford's a really good example. Methuen like, does do it too. Yeah, Methuen has their cable access, right? Yeah, they're the only ones. All right, we're gonna get to our next segment, uh, Quiz Gym. Oh. I'm going to do quiz gym and uh, like we did last time, the questions will be sort of a precursor to our, our story. Okay. Quiz gym. Yay. In what decade did America first have a female mayor? Uh, like decade as in like. Yeah. 60s, 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So in what decade did America first have a female mayor? 
Can you give me like a, is it like 19 something or like 18 something? I'm not going to give you anything. Okay, the, well, you have to narrow it down a little. Uh, women were given the right to vote in 1883. Thank you, Greg. Okay, yeah. Roughly, was that, that, I could be wrong about that when that amendment passed. <laughs> I don't know. To be fair, there were women in elected offices prior oh, that's to true. them gaining the right to vote. All right, well, that doesn't, that doesn't help you then. At all. Don't take a guess. Ah. First female in America. Yep. Like, are we talking like executive mayor? Or are we talking like like head of a council, pre- who was like president of the council? Really, a mayor. What we what we would define executive. as a mayor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Shot in the dark. Um. I'm gonna go with 1870s. Ah, close though. 1880. Hey, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it was 1887. Now. I have one more question about this. What state was the first to have a female mayor in the United States? Hmm, let's see. Wyoming was the equality state, or is the equality state. I was a little surprised by this, but then I thought about it. When I started thinking about it, it, it made sense. Because a lot of times, there's reason for that. Yeah. Um, Wyoming was the equality state. that They were the first state to, to grant women the right to vote. Um, but I'm guessing it's not that one. Um... Montana was the first female congresswoman. Jeez. Um, I'll give you a hint. Okay. It is west of the Mississippi River. Yeah, that's where I was going. Which surprised me because no. the, the other states had been around for so much longer, you'd think they yeah. had the opportunity. But no. because they were around, they were so established yeah. and they were so entrenched. It, this was more of like a breakout kind of thing. This was like probably like the other states. States at this point had not gonna, really been established. I'm going to guess in Nebraska. It was Kansas. I was not that's close. Damn yeah. close. Yeah, not not far off. I was a little surprised about that. Um, what party was she a member of? Oh, this is I not major this was not th- yeah this was not part of the thing. But no, I just thought of that. What so party she was not she? a major member? So she was not a major member of a party, but she won Under. because because one of the major parties ended up supporting, supporting her, which I won't I won't get into yet. That's fine. But what party was she? Prior nominated. To... Well, she was not nominated by this party because you didn't have to be a member of a party. Like you, didn't, they were you no supported. Her. Yeah. Okay. But she was a she was a member of what party at this point in time? It was sort of like a nonpartisan election. This was the eighteen eighties. So I didn't really look into the, to the history of this party, which I probably will in the deep dive. But this seems early for this party. Okay. Okay. This party really didn't gain legs for another 40 years. Yeah. But it's a minor party. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I... And I, this party had much more support in our area of the country than it did out, out in Midwest or yeah. West. I have no... I, I was surprised. I want to... It's like the 1880s, so I want to go with, like, the socialists or, like, the... Like, the... Like, something like that, but it's not them, yeah. I'm guessing. Um... They did gain, yeah, you're right. That would have been about 30, 40 years yeah. before they gained traction, yeah. You're in the area, but it's not them. Oh, come on. Give up? I mm, shot in the dark, I will say. You know the party, too. I know you know the party. Do I know yeah. the party? Yeah. Um, progressive party, I don't know. Prohibition. 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 Oh, lady doesn't like drinking. Oh, she's going to hate us. We'll get to, yeah, as we sip our drinks. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll deep dive on that yeah. next episode, but, um, well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What state was the last to have their first female mayor? So what state in the country oh. was the last one to elect their first female took, mayor? Took them a while. Took them the longest. I'll give you a hint. It was in 2011. That's really sad. Yeah. That is really sad. Uh, and the one prior to that was 2008. That one shocked me. This one didn't shock me as much. Hmm. Hmm. Last state. I'm going to guess. I'm probably the. I feel like west of the Mississippi would have done it prior. So that I'm going to guess this is east of Mississippi. So I'm going to guess. In the same thought process, this one surprised me, but then didn't surprise me. Okay. Yeah. Um. In that, in that Tennessee train of thought. No, it makes sense when I say it. Alaska. Oh, okay. Yeah. West, but like the newest two, yeah, of the two, states. 2011. Yeah. The one prior to that, 
it was 2008. It surprised me. It was Rhode Island. Ah, see, okay. Rhode Island I in was, 2008. Yeah. And they've only elected one. It was that one one woman. Do you know what? City? I want to say Newport, but I could be wrong. Very old money yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, but it was only the, like, Providence has never had a female mayor. Nobody nobody in, hmm. in, in Rhode Island. Well, ever. Buddy Cianci was mayor for like 20 years. <laughs> right. Like that. Uh, let's see. Okay. How many cities and towns in Massachusetts have elected a female mayor? Who? A, 10. Thank you. B, 24, C, 15, D, 7. Now, let me reiterate this because I think you'll, if I don't say this, you won't get it right. Yeah. How many cities and towns in Massachusetts have elected a female mayor? I'm not counting weak mayors. Yeah. So these are only where the, the people mayor, voted yeah. for a, because there are several. Direct, direct election. Yeah, there were several that like the city council voted yeah. for this I mean, person. I mean, yeah, Donnie is a good yeah. example. Exactly. Well, cool. yeah. um, so how many cities and towns in Massachusetts have elected <clears throat> A female mayor. Not like hmm. how many females have been elected, but like individual towns. So A, 10, B, 24, C, 15, or D, 7. This is including the most recent election? Yep. Okay. So not 24. That'd be my guess. Um, it's more than 7. It's less than 24. I'm going to guess. So I'm going to guess. I'm going to be hopeful and say 15. Wrong. 10? 24. Really? 24. Yeah. I, I 24 I cities and towns. Yeah. Uh, in, in retros, like in looking at it, like one of the highest. It took us a while. Yeah. To get there. To get there. But we did like but a we bunch did. in a row. Um, what city or town? What city was the first to elect a female mayor in Massachusetts? And I'll give you a hint. Not that this will help you at all, but it was in 1939. Oh, yes. Of course. A. Gloucester. B. Lowell, C. Westford, D. Pittsfield. I'm gonna go with my Western theory again, oh, like mm -hmm. the further further away they are from the East Coast. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards Westford or Pittsfield. I'm gonna say Pittsfield. Westford. Damn it! <laughs> Jim uh, is gonna talk about a lot of times. Uh, Jim and I, if you don't know, we're consultants, and we work on a lot of campaigns up and down the ticket from small races to large races and mostly small races mostly small races <laughs> and we segueing because we're consultants one of our favorite pastimes oh, this is, is absolutely our favorite something pastime. we love doing when people spend money on political campaigns it is public record and you can in any state you can find out what they're spending money on it just takes you a little while and because people spend money on some of the most stupid things like the most stupid things yes and so we've decided <laughs> to sit here and and create a segment uh, about the stupid the, things those stupid that people things. spend money on. Hmm. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Now, before we get too into it, we've got a disclaimer. As consultants, sometimes even when you have consultants who kind of know what they're doing, like we do, candidates still spend money Absolutely. on things. Like we, we, people have, candidates have come to us and said, I'm going to do this. And we said, that is a complete waste of your money. Why are you going to do that? They're still, they still go out and do it. Yeah. Campaigns will get you. Campaigns suck. They suck. <laughs> They, they no, suck so bad, you all, but right. like if you're running for uh, running for office, it sucks it so take, bad. It, take, it takes a, it takes yeah, it and, really and the toll it takes on you is so large. Or your family, or your family, that when you're done, you have to start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and when that podcast doesn't do well. You start another a couple podcast. years later. You start another podcast because you're so emotionally taken by what has happened that you need some kind of outlet. some kind of outlet some, some outlet and some that's why outlet. we're here and so we have to make fun of a lot of things that people do so we've come up with a segment and jim's going to get into some of the stupid things that people spend money on in so, the campaign. this is massachusetts i i had to here's the best part about ocpf there's so much information out there like so much information it's also a very different system from when gary and i first started like getting into politics true because you can't look like you can no longer go in there and be like, 
how much did someone spend on balloons? Like, this is no longer an option, so you need to really dig to, like, find stuff. And the way banks report now and the way you have to self-report, sometimes yeah. that information isn't even there. You have to, like, look for the vendor. You need to know the vendor name. You have to know yeah. the vendor name, yeah. so it, it's a little more difficult, but still fun nonetheless. So uh, there are many things on campaigns that don't matter. So many things. Um, but I can't, I can't get mad at these things. Okay. Donations. Yeah. To charity. Yep. For example, donations to other campaigns. So you're talking about campaigns can make donations to other campaigns. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So like I had a campaign account yep. and I felt like this candidate supported my values and supported the things that I care about. So I donated money to them. After your election cycle. Yeah. After yeah. my election, even during one of my election cycles, I was like, you know what? I think this person need, can use the money better than I could. <laughs> that generally, goes that generally is not a good sign, yeah. but okay. So though, I can't say that's a stupid way to spend your money because I can't get into that person's yeah. ideas of what they care about. Um, campaign events. This is, this is, this is the thing where you're like, Oh, I want to nitpick like what they bought mm -hmm. it, for this campaign. event. Mm -hmm. This is what makes it hard. You can't do that anymore. Because they don't have to list out, like, I spent X on balloons, food, yep. whatever, ticket sales, something. Um, meetings. This is mm. one of those things that you always see mm -hmm. in campaign finance stuff is volunteer meetings. Consultants like ourselves get very creative yeah. with how candidates can report can spend things. Their money, yeah. yeah. So uh, volunteer office meetings. Supplies. Su office supplies. Office yeah. supplies. You see that a lot. Yeah. Um, it's oh, not oh, always for example. End, end, of, end of the year staff meeting. <sighs> Yeah. yeah, things like that. Yeah. Xmas, by the way, all over OC Xmas. Just that's the the reason why they spent something. Xmas. Xmas party or just X Xmas? Mess. That's it. Christmas. So just, it's just, just Christmas. Christmas. But not like Christmas party or Christmas bonus some, or Christmas. Some, some were bonuses. Some were meetings. Some were food. Some were gifts for staff. Okay. One several things were just Xmas. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Interesting. Um, but, so, like I said, can't get mad at certain things. Things I really am glad I see on there. Staff, uh, payroll, uh, salary, things like that. Excellent. I'm glad to see it. People who work on campaigns deserve to get paid, deserve to get paid well. <laughs> My favorite category that I found while going through, illegible. <laughs> illegible. Because the bank is self-reporting. And so when the bank ah, reports what the right. check was so for... So candidates don't have to necessarily right away report. Yes. The bank just says basically what's on the memo line. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Illegible. Illegible. Yeah. And then you, they have to like fill... It's like blue lettering yeah. afterwards. You got to like go in. What it was. The candidate has to define yeah. what um, illegible is. POS. Do you know what POS stands for? Um, you should. You worked in the food industry. Yeah. It's a type of uh, reporting system that you use for the computer system. Point of sale. Yeah. Yeah. Lot of point of sale <laughs> because if you use a debit card, yeah, and you swipe, mm -hmm. it ju the the automatic reporting that goes to the bank is POS. So this has happened a lot in the last several years. Okay, so they have to again go in and define what it is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't. Okay, and so it's just like point of sale. I'm going to use this as an example, like Chili's. So obviously that was like a campaign meeting or like a a, a meeting with a constituent or something like that. It, it comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. So, to kind of pinpoint what I was looking for, I did from January 1st to December 31st of this year. Mm -hmm. Well, this last year. Mm -hmm. now, 2021. 55, uh, 51 and a half million dollars was spent, according to OCPF. Okay. So, in an off... Well, it's not really an off year, because... Cities report, you know, mayors and things like that reported. So, but this is mainly mayoral, city council, school committee races, or special elections. Yes, yeah. Spent fifty-one million dollars, and also state elections. So, like uh, one that was in there a lot, subscription services to like papers and things like that. A lot of candidates do that. A lot of candidates, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their campaign account. So, um, which is okay. That's so if you're a state candidate. Mm -hmm. You still have to report that, so mm -hmm. that's coming in from state candidates and things like that. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like state reps and state senators who have some... one of the new things that's actually come up in recent years. In recent year, I guess Zoom. 
Oh. How much do you think they spent on Zoom subscriptions? Okay. Well, a Zoom subscription goes for about 150 bucks for the one that, like, is, like, you, you don't have to limit people. Yep. There's um, also, like, a monthly subscription and things like that. Oh. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go this year hmm. half a million dollars. Went really high. Ah. Oh. Yeah. A lot less than that. Uh-huh. That's not a stupid thing for people to spend it's money a, on. I'm, not, I, I'm yeah. just pointing out fun things okay. that I found. Because it's really hard to find stupid. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> $50,000. Okay. Which is not unreasonable in the times and days we live in now. All right. Um, one thing that Gary and I hate... Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. You're going to go billboards, aren't you? I'm not going to go billboards. Oh, I, I, it was hard. It was real hard to find. Okay. Um, but what do, what what shouldn't candidates not spend too much money on? What do you always tell someone? Oh, here we go. All right. How much money do people spend on yard signs? I didn't year? look that number up. It's too hard to find because oh. there's too many vendors to be able to go through each single vendor and add up all those prices. Because a good example, there's a large company. That does mailings and signs and literature and to just parse out the signs that was spent by that company, it was it was too difficult. Fair. Okay. But I found a way to find out a useless cost for things that people spent money on that wasn't signs, but it was sign related. Gary and Gary and I we cannot get over how much people spend on signs. Mm -hmm. Because what don't signs do, Gary? That signs don't vote. Signs don't vote. So they have one, one real, actual, minuscule, tiny responsibility, and it's just momentum. Yep. It shows people what type of momentum you have. That's so, it. So, go ahead. How much money was spent at Home Depot on signs, oh. accessories, wood? Uh, I'll, I'll give you some of the categories: wood for signs, supplies for signs, GOTV supplies for campaign signs. Cable ties and washers for signs. Okay, I'm going to get out my calculator now. I'm going to go fifty-one million dollars was spent. These numbers are much smaller than you'd expect them to be. Right, but I'm going to say of that fifty-one million dollars, because who actually uses wood for signs anymore? Local people. But what? Let me think. What it should be is it should be such a low percentage. It should be like half of a percent. Half of one percent? Do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably lower than that. Oh, it's lower than that? It probably is. Okay. So I would say no more than $200,000. $6,800. Not as much as you would think. But this wow. is just at Home Depot. Oh, okay. Fair. Now, I searched the word lumber, Ooh. which I thought would not get me anything because that's a specific thing that you're spending money on. But there's like lumber.com, like lumber. Yeah. Is it like stuff like that? Guess how much was just spent with the search word lumber in expenditures? Home Depot was what? 6800 5,000. 3,200. Okay. Yeah. So this really isn't as bad as I thought really it was. Really isn't as bad. At this, least this year. This segment is a bit of a bust. I, it is. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Because. Or not. Wait, yeah. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, hold yeah. on. Hold on. How much was spent at Party City specifically? Oh. Uh, Again, not as much as you think. I would hope no more than $20,000. Way less. $4.9,000. So 4900 Yes. I don't know why I said it that way. <laughs> this is tough because that doesn't really define how much people spent on party supplies. No, nope, just at Party City. This is why it's difficult. Yeah, so it so, is much more difficult than we thought. Here's one that was a little easier for me. Flowers. Oh. Uh, well, is, flowers? It's some are good, some are bad. Yeah. Like flowers for an event. Like somebody died, you're going to send them fly. Yeah. Great, 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 great expenditure. Great now. expenditure. Uh, flowers for your centerpiece at your kickoff. Not great. Not bad bad idea. Yeah. And it happens. Um. Flowers are tough. Um, I would say because it's like flowers.com like or like florists or like ten grand on flowers. Fifty two thousand dollars. Wow. Fifty two thousand. Fifty two point. Well, I'm just. That's it's like I'm a saying. quarter of a percent, pretty much. Or no, it's like hundred tenth of dollars in terms <sighs> of flowers. That's a lot of money on flowers. It's a lot of money on flowers, and that's just typing in flowers. So that's like flowers.com, one eight hundred flowers. Like, Jim, I, I don't want to jump ahead here on you, but did you type in balloons? I did. Not a lot of results. It's like uh, 500 bucks. Not a lot of things are named balloons. I've decided that the next time we do this segment, we're just going to pick campaigns and be like, who spent money on balloons this year? All right. You ready for this, Gary? Yep. Now, see, I just gave you the, like, disappointing news. Okay. I'm going to lead in with I'm going to give you a little good news. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Citizens Bank. Yep. Service charges. Oh. 
Guess how much was spent on service charges this last ele this last election cycle? Service charges. All right. So if we said maybe ten, fifteen a month, um, seventy five. Fifty thousand dollars. Staples. How much was spent at oh, Staples? Jesus. You could. This is a wide range of things. This is yeah. paper. This is ink. This is pens. This is ca possible campaign material. I'd go like twenty five. One hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars. Wow! So that right there is half, like quarter of a percent. Like you're getting up there in numbers yep. now. That's yep. like Boston Globe subscriptions. Oh Jesus! Um, and advertising. Technically, this is some advertising as well. It which, wasn't as much. Which newspaper advertising is a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. Um. But if you'd like to sponsor us, any newspapers out there, yeah, we'd be happy to take you. Uh, we'll say 30000 Wow, 35000 Wow, look at that. Well done. So, finally down to the, the big number. PayPal mm -hmm. is a service you can use to transfer money to a campaign, <clears throat> but they do take a percentage. Mm -hmm. How much was that percentage? Rough number. PayPal. In fees. Not Act Blue. Not Act Blue. PayPal. PayPal. Hmm. 15. 12. Okay. Not bad. Act Blue. This is this is the one, Gary. Right. Here's the big thing. Act Blue is a democratic organization that when you make a donation, they'll take a percentage of that donation and pledge to bring it back to democratic causes. Yes. Um, so in theory, they're taking a percentage where PayPal would take a percentage and pay their corporate, you know, it, it, it pads the corporate part of it. Act Blue takes a percentage and although they do pay their people and, and whatnot, and they also take, take that money and, and they put it back to democratic houses. So it's going to be larger. All Democrats in Massachusetts who want to get elected, use it. As opposed to Republican organizations, which really haven't caught on there. They, I think it's what win red is. What yeah. It's called. They, they have one, it hasn't. At least in Massachusetts, hasn't picked up. Well, it hasn't caught on in most Republican organizations. It's very big for like, like statewide senatorial races, mm. congressional, mm -hmm. presidential things like that. But it really hasn't leaked down to the local. I mean, it took a while for Act Blue as well. So think about this: Act Blue's been in true for a while, the nexus, yeah. as it were, for a long time, and it's gotten to the point where state reps, local mayoral races, now can right. use Act Blue, which previously they were not could not do. Yeah. Um, let's go with Act Blue, probably fees on fees. What did I say? Half a percentage was five two hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. I'll go half a percentage, two hundred fifty thousand. Seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. Wow. That's. Let me give you that number again. That's like seven, almost two percent of money spent by campaigns was given to Act Blue. The total amount for two thousand. This is again within the time, pro January first, two thousand twenty-one, to December thirty-first, two thousand twenty-one. Fifty-one million dollars, seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars was spent just on Act Blue fees. Wow, that's insane. That's crazy. That that's that's a percentage and a half. That's almost that's close to two percent of money between one and two percent of statewide. all money spent statewide it was just given back to Act Blue. That is insane. We are in the wrong business. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. You like that? That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. I I'm, I'm disappointed. I also could not find Blue. Like that was like the first thing I looked for because we Gary and I had this story that um, we were it was a meeting we were running or something like that. And um, it really came down to what should we spend money on? What's going to get people to come to this event? And the answer to that question was from one of our people. Balloons. Balloons. So whenever Carrie and I look at like stupid things that people have spent on, money on, which by the way, it's absolutely no CPF and you can like go through it and like find it. It's just, I would have had to like add up like several different pages. From now on, we're going to single people out. That's how we got to do it. Like, the only hey, way we can do it. So-and-so spent 50 bucks on balloons. Yes. What an idiot. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, even though it, it, it's, it's a little bit late, we're going to start our deep dive. Uh, interestingly enough, you may have you may be able to take a guess as to where this is going, but... I'm going to get women in politics. It does involve a woman. Yes, oh, it, it does, does involve a woman. It does involve a woman. So, um, that, that's how we got the quiz question. Oh, so, okay. All right. 
So tonight's deep dive uh, story takes place in the Windy City, which I know Chicago. Jim has worked in. I love Chicago. So this is a Chicago-based story. I do not suggest you. going to Chicago in like January and February, just FYI. And we're going to get into why. It's cold. In this it's podcast. It's really so, cold. Uh, probably, if I had to guess, if I had to ask you, who was the most infamous politician in Chicago? The Dailies. The Dailies. Uh, first one being uh, the father, Richard Daly, um, who was a mayor in Chicago and basically built this, uh, what we have now is the mentality of the ward boss mentality, basically built machine. a machine. Yeah. Um, and what a machine is, is he had people in every ward who were responsible for getting people to vote for specific people, Chicago turning them out. Fascinating. Uh, you ju you had ward bosses, and mm -hmm. that's where the, the term ward bosses comes from, the dailies. Um, interestingly, uh, Richard Daly was mayor in Chicago, but after being elected in 1975, mm -hmm. dies in office yes, December 20th, 1976. When a mayor dies in office, several things can happen. And in this case, the president pro temp of the city council, Wilson Frost, declared himself acting mayor, as one does, right? As one does. As one does. And this is back in the 70s. This is in the 70s, 76. So, however, much of the city council disputed Frost's claim, and after <clears throat> nearly a week of closed-door negotiations, the city council selected, um, I'm, I'm just going to butcher, his, butcher name. his name. It's Bilandic. B-I-L-A-N-D-I-C. No. No. B I L A N D I C. Belandic. Yeah, Belandic. Yeah. Sure. Uh, he was a city councilor at the time. Yeah. Uh, and so he was sort of this non emotional, sort of this guy. He was a very easy guy. Placeholder. Yeah, he was a placeholder. And they said, hey, we're going to give you this job. Don't run for mayor, but we're going to give you this job. And he said, yeah, absolutely. He's like, I'm very uh, a neutral guy. You know, he, he had no intentions of doing that. Sure. I'll be mayor. Um, you're going to have a special election in two years yeah. to fill the term, and then I'll run for city council again when the time comes. Okay, great. That's actually what happens a lot in Chicago. There's actually the case of that, like, several mayors have died in Chicago. It happens. And so there's, like, an interim, and then there's, like, a full-time person the council appoints. Now, in 1977, two years later, they ha <coughs> or a year and a half later, um, they decide they're going to have a special election. Mm -hmm. they, they had decided. Um, and Belandic decides, well, you know what? I'm going to run. I'm going to run for mayor. I'm, I'm mayor. Because I've been mayor now and people like me. Yeah. And we call this the honeymoon period, which is like the first year. And because of that, he was part of, uh, leading up to this, he was part of Daly's machine. Yeah. Right? So he had these people. Yeah. And so to because Daly, yeah, he was the mayor sense. and because he had been continuing this machine while he was mayor, <clears throat> they were like, yeah, sure. Okay. And they they elect him there. So yeah. He gets elected. Now, late in 1977, after being reelected, Bielandic, Bielandic fires a consumer sale the, the consumer sales commissioner. Her name is Jane Byrne. Oh. Byrne had recently called Bielandic out for trying to increase cab fares in the city by eight percent. And he had tried to bump up the cab fares in the city, and she thought this was horrible, so she calls him out on it. He gets embarrassed. And he actually basically just fires her outright, which was sort of an issue. Um, she had been handpicked for that job by Mayor Daly himself. She was part of the Daly machine. She was part of this. She had actually previously been co-chair of the Chicago Democratic City Committee. She was kind of a big deal. And he outright fires her because she he was very uh, she was very outspoken about him. Sure. Now months after being fired as the head of the Consumer Affairs Department, Byrne challenged. Blandick in the 1979 Democratic mayoral primary, uh, which the Democratic primary is the big deal because Republicans don't really hold anything. So, officially announcing her mayoral campaign in August of 1977. Which that's changed in Chicago politics now. It's nonpartisan races. Now, as a tax, this is this is uh, what happened after that. She decided in 1977 after the special election. She said, "You know what? Screw this guy." In August of ninety, uh, August of seventy-seven, the machine starts folding in. On right, itself. she's like, I'm gonna run. Part of politics. Now, fast forward to nineteen seventy-nine, which is the election, which is the year of the election. Two years later, so she announced about two years before the actual election. Everything goes smoothly for him. He has a couple issues with um, unions. Actually, completely off topic, but he had a, and I thought this, was, he had a, a union strike in the city. It was uh, city cemetery workers and grave diggers. Oh no! Striked. Oh no! They wouldn't dig graves. Oh, no. 
but he solves it. So you know, solution and moves on. Great, everything's right. everything's going good for him. Now, there is a blizzard. What year? Seventy-nine. The blizzard of seventy. The blizzard of seventy-nine. The here's here's the issue. The storm w was pretty bad. So yeah, the, the the storm. Was pretty cold. Saturday morning, uh, there was supposed to be a minor storm of about two to four inches, according yeah. to the Chicago Tribune. How many days until election? Day? Which, interesting enough, guess who worked for the Chicago Tribune at this point in time? David Axelrod. Really? Who knew? Who knew? There's articles about him on here. But anyways, um, the storm that started Saturday morning was supposed to be two to four inches, uh, but it developed by Saturday night into a massive blizzard that clogged roads, shut down both airports, and paralyzed CTA trains and buses. The heavy snow the, 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 the heavy snow collapsed roof after roof and crushed weak garages oh, into no. kindling. Chicago Mayor Michael Bolandic declared an emergency before the storm finished howling. He smartly ordered the city snowplows to clear school and park district parking lots so that residents would have somewhere to park their cars. That was one of the first things he did, right? Here's the issue. This this happened on, uh, let me see, uh, Saturday the 13th. Okay. Saturday, January 13th. I'm going to read you... Like I'm going to read you a letter to the editor here for the Chicago Tribune. This is, somebody wrote this in. As a taxpayer and motorist, I am outraged at the condition of Chicago and suburban streets. The letter writer wrote to the Tribune, Streets weren't plowed. Stalled and double-parked cars were blocking traffic everywhere. She explained, Come on, City Hall. Chicago has enough manpower and resources to get the problem cleared up. That letter appeared in the Tribune Friday, January 12th. Yeah. The snow started on Saturday. Interesting. On New Year's Eve, they had had a snowstorm of about nine inches. Yeah. And Chicago did not handle it well. So and people people were pretty storm. upset about yeah, it. Sure. This was of complete different proportion. City officials and workers could not get traction. Life did not get better for a while. The snow kept coming over the next few days. This is on the 13th and 14th oh, now. Oh, so it went several days. It oh, went several boy. days. This Chicago really remained paralyzed. Buses, trains did not run or were greatly delayed. Schools were closed all week. When they did open on January 22nd, which is now 10 days later, there was no bus service because most of the neighborhood schools were inaccessible. Yeah. The city didn't even begin plowing residential side streets until January 20th. This is seven days later. <laughs> now, the Tribune did note that on January 19th, the day before, there were two side streets in the city that were plowed. Just happened to be the oh, block no. where Belandic lived no. and the block where the mate Mayor Daly lived. Oh, no. Gar garbage was not collected for at least 10 more days. Before the age oh. of computer banking, thousands of people waited for government checks or were paying bills, were late paying bills, yeah. because they needed their check in the mail. There was no <laughs> deposit, right? Yeah. Everything had been completely shut down. The biggest was the parking debacle, when furious residents complained that many parking lots were not plowed and there were many more weren't accessible because surrounding streets still were snowed in. Belandic reported, well, we wouldn't be advertising them unless they were clear. But the Tribune did report that they were not actually plowed. <laughs> As if that wasn't enough, Belandic announced that he was cracking down on parked cars, ordering police to issue tickets and start towing. Something that had to happen if the streets were going to be cleared. Sure. Now, they were stuck in the streets. There was literally pictures of, of people just yeah. stranded in the streets. The mayor kept talking, adding that there will be no exceptions at all for sick, elderly, or poor people who could not remove their cars. Direct quote. Okay. Sick, elderly, or poor people who couldn't move their cars. This is the Democratic mayor, by the way. I feel like, I feel like there was... There was people who, yeah. yeah, all right. So he goes, if there are such hardships, they can tell that to a judge. That's what judges are for. Direct quote. This is terrible. Direct quote. This is, this is in January, right? Yeah, is he has a primary coming up in February. Oh. Yeah, it's oh, closer okay. than you think, right? Oh. Well, now, Chicago always holds their stuff really, really, it really early. early. The primaries are really early. Now, life, uh, streets, mass transit, work, schools, garbage pickup didn't return to some semblance of normal normality until very late in January. 
But consider as big as the blizzard was, it accounted for just a fifth of the fall, a fifth of the snow to fall that winter. It's a lot. So a fifth of it falled in one in, in the course of one storm. One, one weekend. Right. I think it, uh, it says right here, um, uh, which stands now as the snowiest record. Stands as the snowiest on record with a staggering eighty nine point seven inches that season. That's right. A lot. Barred, uh, buried under that seven and a half feet of snow were Belandic's hopes, <laughs> is, is what the Tribune reported. <laughs> buried, buried underneath okay. this 90 inches of snow were Belandic's hopes. Now, Byrne, uh, um, Jane Byrne, who had been co-chairman of the Democratic Party under Mayor Daley. The Chicago Democratic Party. The machine, yeah. Uh, she knew that the workings of how the, how the machine worked, and she knew how it worked well. She sensed that there was some vulnerability with this, and... <laughs> <laughs> because Daly was no longer around to move the party, yeah. uh, there was a lot of vulnerability here. Going on. Now, nobody nobody actually believes she could win, right? You, you cannot expect them, and, and this is a... The people who voted for it, this is where Jim and I can sort of reiterate, right? If you're in a race, right, and you are the mayor, or you are the, the front runner, you don't you ignore the people behind you until yeah. there's, no, there's a reason for you to pay attention yeah. to them, right? And there are three quotes I'm going to give you from the campaign, from from the uh, from the Blandic campaign. Right? You cannot expect the media to ignore your opponent, even if it is only Jane Byrne. That was an early on one where one of the staffers was basically like, "Hey, don't expect them to ignore her. It's Jane Byrne, right? But like, don't expect them. they're going to give her some traction, right? They're going to give her some. So don't worry about it if they start." hurting you or hitting, you know, propping her up. They're, they got to they do that, right? Yeah, make now, make at first, political observers believed her to have very little chance, like I said, but a memorandum inside the Belanda campaign said it should portray her as a shrill, oh. charging, vindictive person, oh, no. and nothing makes a woman look worse. From the campaign, as a memo from yes. the campaign oh. itself. The mayor himself dismissed her. When did they find this memo? Yeah, I, 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 I promise that these, these, these were all sourced from the from the Chicago Tribune, New York Times, a, a bunch of good ones. This is a, a direct quote from the mayor. The mayor himself dismissed her with a snide remark when asked about her. He said, uh, asking what she was running for, he said, uh, she's running for mayor of what? Peoria? Which is another small town in Illinois, right? So he basically completely wrote her off. Now, she enlisted an unlikely ally as her campaign manager, the progressive political consultant, Don Rose, who had worked previously as press secretary. Interestingly enough, I didn't know activists had press secretaries, but he had worked as the press secretary in Chicago for Martin Luther King Jr. Really? Didn't know that was a thing. Despite a lack of support or money, which she seemed to have very little of, none at all, she did diligently went door-to-door -door and worked the streets while denouncing the evil cabal of men like Alderman Ed Burke and Ed Veroliak. By the way, Ed Burke is telling it off. In office, yeah. That ran government. Rose later wrote that Byrne might have had the best candidate I ever handled. Rose wrote that, the, um, yeah. the consultant. Yeah. May have been the best candidate I ever handled. I love when candidates have no... Tr they, they don't have any supporters. They don't have any money. But they have a good message. So they just go door to door. Yep. That's how you win campaigns. But anyways. Now, Byrne's political acumen... Her rapport... Acumen. acumen sorry was her rapport with the media and her direct way of speaking made her a viable candidate. Popular legend probably overstates the impact that the record-breaking blizzard had in early 79 on the election. There was discontent with Bill, Bill Andick even before the 90 inches of snow yeah, piled in Chicago, but it just made it feel like yeah. that was a thing. Now, the media continually castigated him for failing to deal with the snow. While mismanagement made him look even worse, as when he announced the plan for people to park their cars in the school playgrounds, even though they weren't plowed, he had already neglected the African American community for much of his term. But his the issue they were having was the L was so poorly upheld because they couldn't clear the tracks fast enough. They were they weren't clearing the tracks. They just were not handling it fast enough. He ended up closing 14 stations, 14 different L stations around the city. South side. Oh. Now, as you can imagine, those 14 <laughs> stations were in the western south side of Chicago. Okay. Now, this is the picture. I actually watched a PBS documentary on this, and this is how they explained it. And when you think about it this way, if you're from Massachusetts, right, think of it as the commuter rail 
picking people up at the first two stations and then going directly to Boston. <laughs> because so go people Boston, couldn't... The, the, the issues was, was not even... I think like Haverhill to Boston. Oh, like your commuter rail. Or like Worcester. In, like it, it is the furthest piece of... What happened was... Chicago system. Because right. the city was so gridlocked with yeah. cars. They couldn't... The streets were so bad. People who would normally drive had to take public transportation. Sure. And so they kept the suburbs on the outside... So that people could get into the city. I gotcha. So they paint this picture of there's stations filled with African American people. The train comes in and just Fly keeps going. Them, yeah. Keeps going. It flies by them. So the train is going by them, but won't stop to let them on. And it really, like, it, the picture that they painted, and this is where I, I'm going to actually uh, I'll, I'll play the audio uh, for you. I'm going to let Jim come over and watch the doc, watch the actual oh, commercial. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, but if you want to come over is now, her, her, her this is this is one of her ads, and this is probably one of the most poignant, perfectly timed. Uh, this is Jane Burns, one of her last minute uh, TV commercials. Now it's a short ad, but right it, as you you can't see it, right? But but it starts off, and it is the people shoveling themselves out of the snow, right? They are just completely can't shovel out. It shows a train station, people, just tons standing. of people on the stand in there waiting for a train, and Jane then it cuts Byrne, to Jane Byrne she's standing in, in the snow. snow. Yep, it's good. It is snowing on her. There's no Amy Klobuchar as she's doing it. No, but this is like <laughs> it's perfect. It is so well done. Yeah, and this is what runs and a couple next, weeks before thing, she's taught. It's she's in the train station. She's talking to African Americans in the train station. She's talking to elderly. People. Um, and it's just so perfect. It, and that is essentially what happens leading up to the last week before the election. Now, despite Belandic's missteps and uh, Burns' tireless efforts, polls up until election day showed Belandic still leading. Yeah. You got to remember he has the Chicago machine. And he this, still has. The this machine, is what yeah. we talk about is the machine. I'm sure some of it's peeled off, I'm sure. But. Now, election day shows up in. The hour, it's middle of the afternoon, and uh, they have what they call exit polls. And we know exit polls are, but the polls indicated that Byrne was actually ahead. And this worried Byrne tremendously. And it's because she said, if I'm getting exit polls from people, I know they're getting exit polls from people. I know what the machine is capable of. I know what they can do. She for the machine. This is very bad. Yeah. Because now they're going to do what they they're are capable lose, of. Lose their minds, yeah. Um, so she, obviously, they do what they have to do and all that stuff. And when the polls finally close on election night, the initial results come in and they did not match what the exit polls were showing. At all. Did not show at all. Uh, Byrne was still down by thousands of votes. 60% of the votes were in. Sure. And she was still down by thousands of votes. If you're out there, you know, if you have a moment, you can YouTube. Somebody was a genius. And they put a camera, and this is still in the 70s, put a camera in her suite the night of the election results. And they have footage of her getting the results. That's awesome. And footage of this happening. That's how I, how I got it. Is it they're still down thousands of votes, 60%. Are, and they're like, she's just like, they, they did it. it. They're done. Somebody comes over to her from her campaign and says, 60% are in, but the 40% that are missing are all from the south and west side of Ooh. Chicago. I love, I love a twist. I love a twist, right? <laughs> because they noticed that they were missing on the south side, uh, th where almost majority of African American voters live, it took till around 10 p.m. for the votes to come in, and it became clear by that point that she had won the Democratic primary in the biggest upset in Chicago political history. She ended up winning by about 14,000 votes in the end. Really? Yep. She will go on to beat the Republican in the general election by the largest margin a Democrat has ever beaten a Republican by in their mayoral system. She got 82% of the vote, which was the highest Oof. to that point. It was like 81.9. That's, that's nuts, yeah. 82% of the vote. In nobody, the gets election. That's, nobody, nobody gets it. Nobody gets 82% of the vote. That's our deep dive. The first woman elected Chicago mayor. That's great. That was great. I like that. That's a little little bit of story time. I thought, like, I was like, wait, isn't Harold Washington? Like, <laughs> I thought he was, like, after the dailies, but I forgot about Harold him. Washington beat her four years later. Did he? He did. Oh, she then runs for a mayor two more times. She runs against him. And then after Harold Washington, she runs against, she Daly. Runs against Daly. Yeah. Daly beats her. Wow. She contends really well the next two. Like, 
Yeah, she she comes lost in by really, like ten really thousand yeah, votes yeah, on yeah. both of them. Um, and there's like a fringe race where I don't That's know I don't know so if someone people wrote her in or she dropped out. She also ran for clerk of courts and, and um, yeah, uh, lost. But that's that's yeah. interesting that like she's been erased from the collective memory of Chicago, and she's been erased because the guy that beat her just slowly let her go. They, they talk about Washington just letting her out into the abyss. And then when the dailies took back over, just let her go. That she was like the most popular female yeah. in Chicago, and by the time she was about to die, nobody even knew her name. There is a interstate named after her, like it's like the yeah. the Burn Turnway or whatever it is. Burn Turnway. I forget <laughs> Thruway. I really it is. hope yeah. it's called. That. I think it's the Burn Thruway. Um, <laughs> but I was just I had never heard of her before, and she was Chicago's first mayor. Female mayor. Female mayor. I'm sorry. And it was like 40 years before Boston had their first few. 50 yeah. years before Boston had no 60 years. Not 50, 60 years. I was gonna say does well, LA 79, even... so 80, so 20, 40. Yeah, 40 years before yeah. Boston elected their first female mayor. I was gonna say, has LA ever elected a female mayor? <sighs> New York never elected a female mayor. Yeah, not that I, I, I didn't look those up, but it, it just blew my mind that there, nobody knew who she was. Now there have been since her, uh, there are some documentaries done towards later in her life. There have been some stuff done that you can find out there since she's passed. Um, she lived till she was 101. Wow, that's a lie. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that out. Okay. Uh, that's a lie. I got that mixed How up. How long did she live till gay? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's dead, though. Um, <laughs> she's not. She's listening right now. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was Chicago's first female elected mayor, and she seemed to just kind of... Fade into, into oblivion. Fade into oblivion. Uh, but I'm sure that was on purpose. That was... Right. Well, right. so a lot, of, a lot of things that I found about her, I think, were only there because of Lori Lightfoot. 81, by the way. She died in 81. She was 81 years old. Um, 2014. Yeah. Because of Lori Lightfoot. So when Lori Lightfoot, Chicago's mayor, current mayor, got elected, she was like, oh, they're like, oh, a female mayor. Well, the last time we had a female mayor. Didn't and so the they, they, go, they went back and so they dug up a bunch of stuff about oh, her. So a lot you. of things you can find out now, it's only because um, of, Lori of Lori Lightfoot, unfortunately. But that is Jane Byrne. I was first female man. Fascinating lady. There's a bunch out there on her. I'm yeah. totally gonna look it up now. Her like 83 election and like an, uh, there are a bunch more ads where she's just sitting there talking to the camera. It's, it's great. It's pretty funny. Good stuff. Good stuff. But it reminds me of like Ed Markey when he like first got elected. Very kind of non. Yeah. All right, Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, stay tuned uh, again. Thank you to Catherine. Uh, for supporting us, Catherine, uh, M. Catherine M. For supporting us, um, I'm gonna call Catherine B. From now on, go for it. A lot of people do actually. <laughs> um, and uh, feel free to visit our, our Patreon. Remember to rate us if you listen to us on iTunes Please. or or Buzzsprout or Amazon or Google, or however it is that you're on Spotify or any whatever you're listening to us on. Uh, please rate us, like us, help us out. Share if you listen to us on YouTube, subscribe yeah. to the page. And uh, or if you're finding us on Facebook, make sure you like All Politics Is uh, to continue to find content about us. And we got the guys in the flag jackets. Thanks for listening. Thanks, everybody.